Hi there, it's John with Video Trail Reports. It's a slightly overcast day up here in Big Cottonwood Canyon, and we are here to hike Lake Blanche. This six mile out and back trail will climb 2,700 feet to three lakes, Blanche, Florence, and Lillian. To reach the lakes, you'll use the Milby South Trailhead. This trailhead is easily identified by the sharp S turn where you will turn off into the parking lot. Limited street parking is also available if the lot is full. Here, you'll find plumbed restrooms and trail signage. The first quarter mile is a paved trail running alongside Big Cottonwood Creek. Along this area and at the trailhead, there is additional signage more specific to this section of the canyon. 0.2 miles from the parking lot, the trail will split and separate from the paved walkway. By and large, this is what the trail to Lake Blanche is like. This is a strenuous trail, non-stop incline and protruding rocks. What you see now is what the majority of the terrain is like to Lake Blanche. This area is rugged and beautiful, but I appreciate that the trail does not concentrate the incline in any one area. About three-tenths of a mile in, the trail crosses over the creek where it remains on the northeastern face of the canyon. Here you'll find a small memorial that reads, Come and sit a while and think of Cliff, whose heart found home in these mountains. He wanted peace and was willing to work for it. He loved a good dinner and was glad to cook it. Dr. Clifford Abe. Who doesn't like to think of a peaceful man ready to cook dinner while enjoying the same place he did? There's also a bench to rest on while you take in this picturesque environment and think about Cliff. Across the bridge, there's a small sign indicating the direction of the trail. This is the first of surprisingly few switchbacks on this trail, so head left. I have to say, this canyon is truly stunning. As you go farther up the canyon, you begin to get a sense of the scope of this place. Along this entire trail, I would recommend keeping an eye on the canyon walls behind you. At a few sections, the creek comes alongside the trail, providing multiple prime photo opportunities. Remember though, this water is for drinking, not playing. Another thing I really like about this trail is how there are plenty of excellent areas to take breaks. Like this one here. Even a large group can get off the trail, have a seat in the shade, and recharge. It feels so good to see everything this green after the drought years we've had lately. This is about as productive as Utah wilderness gets. As you get higher up the canyon, you can look back and see the cliffs by the road, and a whole new forested ridge. Halfway around, the trail will separate from the creek and widen. The trail will be less steep in this area, however, it will not last long before you are back into dense hillside forests. If you are ever hiking and see a collection of logs that seems to be out of place like this, Typically, they have been placed there in an attempt to keep you out. These, for example, are here to keep people out of the drainage, but more commonly, you will see them laid across false trails in an X. Although there is no shortage of good rest areas along this trail, this one is especially good for groups to rest before continuing up the trail. As you come up the trail and look to the southwest, you can see Dromedary Peak and closer, the mound of land under the lakes. Although this lake is accessible in that it's not a very long trail, you must remember that the weather in the mountains can change out of nowhere. Combine that with a trail that faces in the sun in the afternoon and a steady climb, and I can see how people underestimate this trail. You can feel that there's something strong in this place and start to see the crushing power of snow here. Farther up the trail, it becomes more apparent in the rocks. Despite rumors of a moose on the trail, I saw none. The only animals of note I saw were a couple of chipmunks dashing back into their burrow, not realizing how small a threat I really was. Directly above the chipmunks, bees collected pollen from these flowers. Remember how I brought up out-of-place logs? Unless you know where you are going, this is not where you are going. There is really no reason to stand in the sun on a breakout here. Especially if you are not well acclimated to the elevation, 
Use areas like this to catch your breath out of the sun. Stay hydrated and watch out for the signs of altitude sickness. Even a quick stop to adjust your pack can help you hit the trail with new vigor. There are a couple of large switchbacks on this trail. When you reach this one, you can clearly make out the shelf below the lakes. When this switches back, it's in the middle of a giant rock slide. Areas like this are where trekking poles really shine and can make this terrain a breeze to go over. Just be aware that this trail does not cross the rock slide, but rather turns south back onto the dirt. The lakes are not far from here. Ahead, you can see Sundial Peak, which will be a good indicator of how far you have to go, since Lake Blanche sits at the base of the summit. I'm always amazed by the size and strength of nature when I experience the outdoors. These twisted old trees can speak volumes about the natural history of this place. Just before reaching the lakes, the forest will dissipate, revealing the stone cap that resists the erosion from heavy snowpack this area receives. As you'll see, these rocks have been gouged and polished by millennia of rocks and ice being dragged down this slope. A bit farther up, the trail traverses these rocks, at which point you can take a closer look. The trail will skirt along the edge of the forest for a bit longer, and then exit, following these striations like an arrow pointing towards Lake Blanche. Camping is allowed beyond 200 feet from the lake. However, because of watershed protections, fires and entering the water are prohibited. Just before you see the lake, the mountain funnels the trail into this small ravine where many have scribed their names onto the rocks. It should go without saying that you should not include your name on this wall. But to walk through it, it feels like there are dozens of people welcoming you to the lakes. There are even a few names that have been here for decades. Then the trail crosses the top of these rocks. These long stripes that run downhill are not stratification within the rocks, but glaciers from the past have ground the stones into the mountain, carving deep gouges. Just past this, you'll see Lake Blanche over the retaining wall. There are several trails around here to various places around the lakes. On the far end of the lake, there is a waterfall that feeds Lake Blanche from the snowpack above. From here, you can see Sundial Peak, and to the right, Dromedary Peak. Dams were built on the lake in 1908, but have since partially collapsed and are no longer maintained. Below is Lake Florence, fed by a waterfall from Lake Blanche. Fishing is allowed in these lakes. Check the Utah DNR for current regulations. If you'd like a link to their website, it'll be down in the description below. And last is Lillian. Thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, please consider sharing video trail reports with someone you think will like it too. And make sure you're subscribed to see new videos every week. Thank you.